Hey folks, today we're going to have a look at some urban planning projects in Nigeria. This will really help you with paper two. So if you just pop that as your title, so urban planning projects. Now these can be um, different for different countries that you might have studied. My students, uh, we do Lagos and we look at Nigeria. So I'm going to just pop that in brackets. Um, but yeah, you might well have been taught or be looking at um, Rio de Janeiro, for example, could be one. I have got another video on that, so if you want to have a look at that, feel free. Um, but yeah, I'm going to talk you through two different projects. So these are both in Nigeria, both in uh, Lagos, which is uh, the main city, main economic city, not the capital, but the main place. Um, and one is education based and one is transport based. So I'll start over here with the uh, Makoko floating school. So within Lagos there's a huge lagoon and lots of residents live there in very makeshift buildings. There are not enough schools. So what the uh, uh, council if you like have done is they have created some floating schools and they're sustainable. So it's Makoko floating schools. Now I think the aim you know is to build a lot of these and and the easiest way to remember this as as always is with the dual coding so we'll put a picture together so sort of a, a roof like this and then a structure and it, it's got I think three different sort of levels to it um, and the whole school itself is floating so it's on these um, barrels repurposed big blue barrels um, and these barrels are sort of tied together to create a floating structure so really good recycled materials in fact let's put an arrow to that and put recycled barrels so they would have come from industry of some sort um, as a container now the, the structure itself is very sustainable it's made of um, timber so it's made of wood which as we know can be sustainable for replanting. On the roof itself um, there are solar panels and that provides electricity, it provides power, provides light, provides internet, um, it's everything, every, all the electricity needs are from the solar panels. Um, and as we know in Lagos, in Makoko, there are big issues there in terms of sanitation and hygiene and, and, and toilets, access to toilets. So it does also have, just try and draw um, uh, a toilet there, uh, a compost toilet, uh, which is again a very sustainable way of doing it. So it's composting and um, breaking down human waste in a really sustainable way. Now, these schools, they've got room for 60 children. Let's put a big sort of smiley face and have a think about our advantages here. 60 children getting access to education is brilliant. I mean, it's a huge population, so you know we, we need more of these schools. There's not enough of them, but there is um, classrooms inside that fit 60 children. And if you think about um, Makoko and the floating um, slum that's there, this is really accessible. You know, it's a it's a short paddle away from where many of these children are living. So provides room for sixty children. It's easily accessible. So they haven't got to get on the train. They haven't got to pay money or get on a bus. Um, so it's easily accessible from. Makoko slum um, and another big positive obviously with climate change um, happening and you know global warming sea levels are rising and this building it just needs it would just need longer anchor points it's able to cope with sea level rise so um, that's a real benefit for it copes with sea level rise Obviously, we're predicted, you know, up to a meter in the next um, sort of seventy-five to hundred years. So that's really good news for the school. However, and you might get asked about some negatives. 
Um, there's not many here because they are really cheap, really affordable, really accessible. Um, but because they're made of timber, they are quite easily damaged. And, and really one of these homes, not homes, sorry, one of these schools could be really affected by just one severe storm. So we want to put uh, made of timber. Could, I say could, I think we have had, um, there has actually been some damage to one or two of these. Uh, could get damaged in a storm. There we go. So that's the floating schools. That's a really easy one to remember, hopefully, when you're in an exam and you're being asked about urban planning and how urban planning is improving the lives of the poor. So lots to talk about there. Education is the way out of poverty. So that's a really good case study to use. Uh, the next one is BRT, and this is Bus Rapid um, Transit. Bus Rapid Transit. Now, anyone who knows me knows I'm terrible at drawing buses, so I'm not gonna even try today. Um, instead, I'm gonna try and draw Lagos. So this is part of Lagos, and then there's bridge over here and then it extends down to some sorry, hair on that some islands down here okay and then this area is the lagoon okay this if I draw some waves you can see that's the lagoon now this bus rapid transport system was put in place to help the urban poor actually getting onto buses and getting to their jobs and improving journey times and helping people so it starts up here in the north and there are bus stops all the way down south and it actually crosses the bridge goes onto Lagos Island which is another part of Lagos and, and it carries on so it's a really really helpful bus route okay if we put just so we know where we are let's put Lagos there down here is Lagos Island brilliant and then what, over here we've got the lagoon so we'll just put the lagoon over there. Now what it is, it's a dedicated bus route for buses. They're blue and they carry 200,000 people a day. So if we put just a little smiley face in there. So it's a dedicated, dedicated bus lanes. Anyone who's taken the bus on a bus lane will know um, that this is really good because it avoids all the congestion, all the traffic. From, and we know that there's terrible traffic and congestion in Lagos, so really good news. Dedicated bus lanes. This means faster journey times. Faster journeys means people can get places and it also helps with business and improves earnings. Um, another thing they've done is they have discounted the fares. They want people to get on these buses. They want to help people access jobs and get into the city. Um, and as we said, it carries 200,000 people or passengers per day. Okay, so anyone who lives near Portsmouth, my school where I work near there, um, that's nearly the population of Portsmouth getting on this, these buses every day. But there are some negatives, okay, not huge ones, but we need to be aware of them. You'll probably notice from my drawing, so that is the north, it pretty much just runs north to south. So if you live, east or west we are unable to access these buses easily so that's the main one it only runs north to south and back again but there's a huge amount of areas of Lagos that are not being supported not only that the buses are unreliable so the timetables are there but the buses aren't always showing up and you can find yourself in long queues, okay, long, long queues um, and, and long waiting times. So people want to use them, but unfortunately the service, it's not quite there yet in terms of um, efficiency. So there you go, you've got a transport one and an education one and hopefully you can use this when it comes to uh, any questions about urban planning projects.